Calls tonight for attempted murder charges against Japanese whalers after this month's high seas collision. Anti-whaling crews made the plea as they came ashore in Fremantle today. Hey, mate. Go on. Back on land, but not backing off. The Artie Gill captain and crew want the Japanese whalers they claim ran their $2 million boat charged with attempted murder. Did you get every be alive, brother? <laughs> That's what it is. You cannot go ramming a small boat at sea and get away with it. It's more than three weeks since the Shonan Maru ploughed towards the Adi Gill in Antarctic waters. The Japanese standing by their story that the Sea Shepherd campaigners deliberately stood in their way. As it looks like they're going to miss us by about 20 metres and then suddenly they turn to starboard. Oh my God! Wow! Well, I do know one thing. If I had a rammed and sunk a Japanese whaling vessel down there, the Australian Navy would be down there with a warrant for my arrest. The smaller boat's bow was sheared off, crewmen today reliving the terrifying moment. But the final impact was, if that would have been one metre more to the right, I think uh, yeah, there wouldn't have been many left of us. It's a small miracle no one was killed in that accident. Just days later, the Adi Gill sunk under tow. Sea Shepherd mothership, the Steve Irwin, has returned briefly to Fremantle. <laughs> for refuelling and repairs to her helicopter. The Adi Gill crew will be interviewed by Australian and New Zealand maritime safety investigators. And there are warnings for the Japanese with plans for another fast patrol boat. Adi Gill, who financed the first one, is heading to New Zealand next month to discuss Mark II. It might be very similar to the original Adi Gill, or it might be a completely new vessel. That's still to unfold. Today, that crew arrived in Fremantle on board another protest vessel, the Steve Irwin. We're going to go out in the piss tonight. <laughs> it's been 50 days on a dry boat. We're looking forward to having a beer. The captain of the ill-fated Addy Gill is the only one who returned to the campaign. The other five are headed home, one as far away as Norway. They've got an awesome crew here. I don't have a boat anymore, so uh, <laughs> I don't need to go back. The Steve Irwin's here for emergency helicopter repairs and to refuel. Sea Shepherd Captain Paul Watson says this season is different for the protesters. They're far more frustrated and therefore they're far more uh, aggressive and violent this year than ever before. The Steve Irwin will leave Fremantle this weekend. Lee Steele, Nine News. After seven weeks at sea, relief at the site of Fremantle Port. Man, it is good to be back on land. Pete Bethune was the captain of the Artie Gill, the Sea Shepherd's high-tech, high-speed protest boat, which is now lying at the bottom of the Southern Ocean. Captain Bethune says he was tracking the Japanese whaling fleet earlier this month when he claims the security boat, Shonen Maru 2, sailed directly into his path. Suddenly, they turned to starboard sharply and cut us in half. There's no doubt in my mind they deliberately rammed us. The six-member crew took shelter in the cabin as the boat took on water. And the whole boat skewed around and almost went underwater, like this wave of water came over the top. It's a small miracle no one was killed in that accident. Steve Irwin captain Paul Watson says the loss of the Adi Gill may have dented their campaign, but not their determination. It prevented us from intercepting the harpoon vessels that we don't have the, the Adi Gill, but I still think that we're going to be able to impact their, their kill quotas. The Adi Gill's namesake, a Hollywood businessman, has already indicated he's keen to fund a replacement boat. The crew will spend the next 48 hours in Fremantle refuelling the ship and stocking up on supplies. The Steve Irwin will then return to the Antarctic to continue its pursuit of the Japanese whaling fleet. Four of the Arty Gill crew will remain in Fremantle. The rest will join the Steve Irwin for the final six weeks of the campaign. Jane Norman, ABC News.